Hello and welcome to another preview show here at Vitality Stadium. Matchday commentator Chris Temple joins me and we'll be going through all things AFC Bournemouth in the next 20 minutes or so. Let's take a look at what's coming up. We'll be looking back at that 1-0 defeat to Manchester City last weekend. We'll also be discussing David Brooks's new contract that he penned earlier this week. And finally, we'll be looking ahead to tomorrow's game against Huddersfield at the John Smith Stadium. But first, we'll start back at last weekend and that 1-0 defeat to Manchester City. Chris, it was a, a strange sort of game, but what did you make of it? Well, it's one of the most sort of talked about 1-0 defeats, uh, particularly by the national press and lots of whom weren't here um, as well. I mean, first and foremost, if you lose 1-0 to Man City, that's not a disaster. Um, the way the game went, the way that Eddie set up with the, the sort of 5-4-1 that at times looked like a 5-5-0 sometimes. Um, I mean, City, they knew they were going to have a lot of the ball. I thought they defended terrifically well. And given the, the personnel they had, you know, you've, you've lost Steve Cook in one of your, your defensive linchpins. Um, so to have Chris Meppham and Jack Simpson, who only had, what was it, three Premier League starts between them, I think, going into that game, um, playing next to each other as well, trying to deal with Sterling and Aguero. Um, I, I thought they defended really, really well. The goal had an element of fortune about it. Mares, you know, scuffed it in the corner. We all know that, but that's, I guess, symptomatic of when it doesn't quite, you know, it's not quite going for you. Um, of course, City had a lot of a lot of chances. Arta Boric had to make some good saves. I thought a lot of the criticism was criticism from people who have only just seen that isolated game uh, and they haven't seen the sort of general context that. I've seen a Bournemouth team over the season take a, a couple of pastings from the bigger clubs. Uh, a big fit run of fixtures coming up now where you need to go into it with some, some spirit and some momentum. And I thought they built that in the game, even though they lost and didn't have a shot. It sounds a bit stupid, but the majority of comments I saw from Bournemouth fans were of people that understood why Eddie went the way he did. Um, of course, you know, speaking to Eddie, they, they, wa they wanted to have shots. They wanted, they just couldn't get their passing game going well enough. City don't give you many chances uh, to get your passing game going. Um, so I, I think most people understood. One or two people, you know, at home, they're thinking, how can you not only not have a shot on target, but not have a shot? Um, but that, just the way the game panned out, they, they wanted to have shots. Of course they did. They changed it up a little bit towards the end, but even couldn't get anything going. Um, so, yeah, I felt har hardly done, harshly done by in some quarters nationally this week. Um, there was one radio station we won't mention nationally who said that the team should have points deducted. Now, that's a radio station who like to try and stir things up to get people phoning in. So uh, that was the more, one of the more preposterous uh, suggestions of the week. But all in all... Um, Positives to take out of the performance. I think I think Chris Meppham and Jack Simpson were, the, were the, probably the two biggest positives out of it for me. Well, you mentioned Meppham and Simpson there, Boric as well. There's a lot of names to, to mention, especially considering they hadn't had too many Premier League appearances between them. Yeah, and look how many goals the team has shipped this season. They're the third leakiest defence in the uh, in the league. They've conceded more than bottom club Huddersfield, which which puts it into context. So I think to, you know to get away with conceding one and to just to build a bit of defensive belief, uh, a couple of partnerships. You know, Chris Meppham's trying to bed down. Jack Simpson is almost like the Manchester. City special team. He's only started two Premier League games. They've both been against Man City, so it'll get easier for him. Um, so yeah, defensively, I think it's it, it was important to, to gain a bit of confidence as much as you can uh, in defeat. And I thought I thought they did that. And you can see at the end Pep Guardiola's reaction. He was absolutely delighted that they'd managed to kind of hold on to that win because they'd have to work hard for it. Well, that, and that that is a pleasing thing from his point of view is that he comes up against defensive performances all the time, but they won't come up against too many more defensive than that in terms of you know they were they were trying to get past most of their Bournemouth players in their own penalty area at any one time. So they kept the ball, you know, 82 percent possession for an away team is a is a huge figure. So he he understandably was delighted, and of course for him. To be honest, they could have the scrappiest 1-0 wins every game for the rest of the season. If it wins in the title, it doesn't matter now. Um, so to come through it with three points, any points dropped now for, for City or Liverpool in the title race, as we've seen, is crucial. We've got City out the, out the way, we've got Arsenal out the way. Just Spurs, as a no disrespect to the other teams, is a, is a big game to come. But it's a really good, good run now that the Cherries can go on to, isn't it? Next seven games, six of the bottom seven plus Leicester, who are just a point above Bournemouth going into this weekend. So this is a huge opportunity to get on a bit of a roll. We talked last week about the, the opportunity still to record quite, quite easily the best ever season uh, in terms of the points tally. Um, still just about within reach to, to finish eighth. We wouldn't want Wolves and Watford getting too much further away, I don't think, um, before that starts to become looking a little bit difficult. But then top half is still, you know, is still very, very creditable for a team of Bournemouth size and standing in this division. Uh, and don't forget, teams like Everton, Everton in 10th, Everton are a massive club. Um, so again, I just think sometimes people can get a little bit ahead of themselves. We've, we've had it before. 
club are still one point ahead of where they were this season, so still have got the opportunity with the fixture list now. Um, and I say the fixture list has, has sort of done that. It's started off relatively favourably, it got tough in the middle, tough, 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 and now it's the, fi the, the initial teams are coming back again. So, yeah, th this next run of games, Huddersfield away, I think will set the marker now for, for what they can achieve over the course of the, the next few weeks. Absolutely. Well, earlier this week, David Brooks penned a new deal here at AFC Bournemouth and he spoke to AFC BTV after doing so. It happened really quickly. Obviously, I got uh, I got told that there was interest in, in renewing, and uh, obviously, I was delighted to hear the news. And there was no problems from from my end and from my representation. And thankfully, the deal got re done really quick. And uh, yeah, I'm just uh, happy to sign. And obviously, from your point of view, you've only been at the club six months, so it must be great that the the management are showing their faith in you after such a short space of time. Yeah, I think uh, when I arrived, I don't think many people would have uh, anticipated the the start I would have made and and probably me included in that. And I think um, with the performances that I've uh, been putting in and, and the games I've been getting through, uh, I think the, the club realised that I was, uh, I was doing a job for the team and, and thankfully they rewarded me. Well, that was David Brooks speaking to AFCB TV earlier in the week. The full interview is available on our website for free. Chris, what a signing he's been for the, for the team. Made a made a huge impact, more impact than anybody could have imagined he would have done. And I think it's it's quite right that Eddie is is twofold what they've done. It's to, it's one to say to other people that are sniffing around in the summer already um, to say he's staying here, uh, or if you want to take him away, he's going to be big big money. But that's a statement to say he wants to stay. Um, it's it's good from David Brooks as well. Um, you just heard him speaking there. You know he's he's sees his future here. He's developed hugely over the course of the first few months that he's been here. And of course, you know, although it's one of the the harsher realities of football. Increasing his wages, getting him on terms with the rest of the squad. He'll he'll have come in on much less money than the rest of the squad, but he is, you know, arguably the standout man at the moment. Um, who, although he's been injured for a few games, um, he's been the the key performer. So it's only right that in terms of his personal terms, they are brought up to the level of his teammates, which is what will have happened as well. So, or certainly to, to nearer the level of uh, some of his teammates. So, all in all, it, it's a it's a really positive news. Quite well timed as well, I think. A bit of positive news coming into this week. Quite often the uh, the contract stuff is done in the background and not necessarily announced at the time it's signed. So I think timing-wise, PR-wise, it's, it's pretty good all round, yeah. And you say he's been injured. It's kind of shown the last few weeks just how important he really is is to the t is to the side. Yeah, I mean, he he came back last week, obviously against City, and played a central role. It was pretty difficult for him to uh, to have much impact. But what it did do, amongst anything else, is it got 71, 72 minutes in his legs, uh, which hopefully will set him up really well for for this weekend. Um, if he's back to his more favour sort of favourable uh, wider position, which with Jefferson Lerma coming back, you would imagine he would be. Um, so yeah, against against the, the lesser teams where he'll get more of the ball, he'll get more opportunities um, to make something happen. Um, having him back and firing now, he's he's basically coming back to 100% just when they need him really. And six goals and four assists. I don't think anyone could see that coming, himself included. No, he's been, he has been popping up, and you know it, it's been nice for him that he's been versatile enough to pop up in different roles as well. We see him mainly off the right, but he has proved himself very good in that central role. We've seen him playing in as the ten behind the striker on, on occasions as well. Um, you know, and he has managed to, to make things happen. You know, his, his goal against Chelsea, plus his assist against Chelsea, at least one. Um, you know, absolutely fantastic um, for him as well to, to be getting those goals and assists against the big clubs as well, which is a, a huge confidence booster. And, and you know, you can make everybody. It's one thing doing it against with the greatest of respect to Huddersfield, Burnley, and the team down the bottom of the table. Um, but if you if you're making things happen against Chelsea and, and the other big teams, that's that's what gets you noticed definitely. And off the pitch, you see him around the place, he seems so happy and so settled in and around the squad and, and of course with Eddie Howe as well. Yeah, big move for him, you know, geographically big move as well from, from uh, the northwest, you know, Warrington lad um, down to the south coast where, you know, many, and there's lots of lads in that dressing room who've, who've sort of made that journey. You think of Ryan Fraser, you know, as someone who's come from, from Aberdeen all the way down here and would have you know, maybe struggled initially to, to settle. David Brooks doesn't seem to have had any of those issues in terms of uh, the way it's translated into his performances on the pitch. Um, so yeah, all in all, he, you know, he's, he's it couldn't have gone any better for him. And this is a lad, don't forget, who didn't play much for Sheffield United last season because he was injured. So um, to, to have started the way he has, um, it's, been a, it's been a huge season for him. Absolutely. And all of that considered, he's still only 21. It's amazing to think what he could achieve in the game. And that's another reason why I'm sure Eddie I wanted to get him locked down um, for, the, for the foreseeable future. You know, long-term contract is, uh, is quite sort of vague, if you like, but that will be, you know, the best part of the next three or four years on these sort of new improved terms. So, yeah, so much more to come. That's the exciting thing, you know. When he was signed, a bit like Lewis Cook, we've, we've mentioned it before, you're probably looking at 
maybe betting him in this season and then seeing the full potential next season. We've seen him come straight in and do it. We've seen Chris Meppham have to come in and straight away at that age. Also, no, I'm not saying he's on the same level as David Brooks, but he's, he's settled in pretty well for a lad who's just come from the championship. So, yeah, these, uh, these, the younger lads that Eddie Howe has been picking off recently in the transfer market seem to be coming to fruition pretty quickly. Absolutely. A very good season for David Brooks so far. Well, next up for the Cherries is a trip to Huddersfield as they go and play at the John Smith Stadium. Let's take a look at what happened earlier in the season. Calling more a pile of rubble. And it comes from Fraser. They've... Wilson! Onside goal! Absolutely almost the same as last year when Callum Wilson stole in against Huddersfield. They were flat. Wilson was alive and he headed it into the back of the net with exactly five minutes gone. The Cherries on the board here. One nil up against Huddersfield. There's one on one of the markers right at the end of the queue. Played Callum on given away by Huddersfield to King and Wilson now up against Zanka one on one he's got Fraser in oceans of space Fraser running onto it 2-0 Wilson this time the provider Fraser the scorer and Bournemouth double their advantage in the first quarter of the game here it came from a Huddersfield mistake on the halfway line but Bournemouth made them pay 2-0 Works its way back to Aaron Moy over on the right hand side now, who cuts onto his left foot and floats the ball into the penalty area. Up go the heads, nodded back in towards Zanko, who stayed forward, and then Dequatra is in there as well, and the headers into the back of the net, and it's Congolo. Well, two first half goals for the Cherries there, saw them take all three points here at Vitality Stadium. Chris, when we saw Huddersfield here earlier in the season, they didn't look like a team that should necessarily be bottom of the Premier League, did they? No, they've had their problems, um, for sure, this season. Um, goals being the particular one. I mean, one of the ones they got here, I mean, their top scorer's got three, um, and that's a centre-half, Matthias Jorgensen. So they, they, the goals have been the big problem for them this season. Um, as I say, Bournemouth have actually conceded more goals than Huddersfield. But, yeah, that was a, it was a tight game, that one, unexpectedly tight. And at the time, it came off the back of a little run of fixtures against some of the big guns. Some more were looming around the corner. I think Bournemouth had lost four games in a row coming into that Huddersfield home game. So, yeah, that, that was, I remember that being a, a big sigh of relief, that, that win, um, the nature of it and the, you know, the need at the time to get three points on the board. So, yeah, um, I, I guess this game now comes into a similar uh, mould. Not, you know, the season has been shaped really. Back then at the start of December, lots can happen. Um, but the season has been shaped now, but it still feels like it's, it's equally as key game going up to West Yorkshire this time around, yeah. And of course, they've had a change of manager since we last played them, but sadly not a change of fortunes for them. No, not really. It's interesting how they've, they've choose, chosen to go down the same route that brought them David Wagner in, in going for, uh, for Jan from Borussia Dortmund's second team. It's, a, it's not an, an obvious route. Um, Daniel Farker, who's doing pretty well for Norwich, he came the same route as well. We could see them in the Premier League quite conceivably next season as well. But yeah, it's, um, it, it hasn't really changed too much for them. They, they've gone with a lot of foreign players. They've got one or two sort of staples, the likes of Jonathan Hogg, who knows the, the English game very well, is going to be out injured this weekend. Aaron Moy had a bit of a spell out injured as well, who's quite a key player for them and has been feeling his way back um, he may well start tomorrow they've got a few midfield injury issues but they just can't score goals um, the way they set up they usually have a big target man up top in Mounier or De Poitre um, Mounier's only got a couple of goals this season as well um, I'm saying all of this and in the back of my mind I'm remembering last season at Huddersfield when they were also struggling um, and they beat Bournemouth 4-1 and we didn't see that one come in. So um, I'm, there's part of me that's, think, that's sort of slightly nervous because you know what the home fans are like and for Huddersfield it's an absolute, they've got to go for it now. The draws, particularly at home, draws are no good. Um, so they're, they're at 13 points adrift. They've got a big, big task. It, it's seemingly impossible to get out of it now. I'm sure it has to be impossible but they won't believe it's impossible until it physically is. Um, so they'll, I'm sure they'll come out all guns blazing. There'll be a bit of pressure to deal with early on, an atmosphere to try and turn around. But if Bournemouth have got the likes of Callum Wilson back, as he potentially could be, um, he's had a good record up there before, scored a couple of goals um, in a 4-0 win back in the Championship. So, yeah, um, they've got it all on to, to deal with the atmosphere and what Huddersfield have thrown at them. But getting it all together with a couple of good players back, Brooks and Wilson back in and amongst it, Bournemouth should be favourites. Well, you mentioned that game last year, and it's also worth mentioning that last last time out at home, Huddersfield actually beat Wolves one 0 in the last minute. So they'll be very mindful of that. Well, won't that they? is, I mean, that is a good win, and it's funny they've only won three games this season, and two of them have been against Wolves. Um, so you look at what those points that Wolves haven't got have maybe done to their season because they're in seventh. They could be even even better placed than they are at the moment. So yeah, a couple of wins over Wolves and one over Fulham, I think, is all they've managed to to rustle up. Um, they are the lowest scorers in Europe's top five leagues. Um, with only 15 goals, I think it is, this season. So, um, yeah, that, that's, there are some pretty sorry stats against them. 
Um, but saying that, as we say, they're, they're not going to give up yet. They're not going to give up. Um, Prove themselves for a pretty good match. And I know Eddie Howe's been impressed with them. He says that the stats actually don't do them any favours in terms of how they've performed this season. So good players on their day, but sometimes they're the spirit when you're in their position. It's down to the spirit, really. They've got a lot of players that they haven't been together a long time. Um, a lot of players are coming in from overseas who probably haven't quite grasped what it means to be in the Premier League and what it means to the town as well. So sometimes your spirit can be tested when things aren't going well. Um, and I think that this is a, a test of their spirit at the moment when it seemingly is all over, but it isn't quite yet. And it's been well documented that our away form isn't necessarily the best as well. But this is a really good opportunity, isn't it, to, to get a good result? I thought I was going to get through the whole show without you asking me about the away form. Yes, um, nine away defeats, yeah, in all comps, uh, ten in all comps, uh, if you include Chelsea. Uh, this is a huge chance to, to correct that. Um, there's no doubt the fixture list hasn't been the best. We've said that so many times. But, you know, it's one of those things, Eddie, you'll say... Every, you know, every game in the Premier League is tough. You hear every manager say that. But if you'd said, would you rather be playing the top six or the bottom six, you'd always rather be playing the bottom six, of course. So from that point of view, this is, does look like a nice little run to get some momentum. Huddersfield away, followed by Newcastle here, isn't it? And then the international break. So a nice couple of results going into that would be great to then send you into the last little run for the line, if you like. Um, Leicester away doesn't look that easy on paper but so this is in terms of the away games we've got left this looks like a, a great opportunity to finally draw a line under that stat absolutely and if the lads can get three points it'll take them up to 37 and that's just nine off their best ever points total and with the run of games you'd fancy them, them to, to overtake it wouldn't you that's a point I've been making a couple of times but you wouldn't you wouldn't want to sort of waste the next couple of games in terms of if you don't get too much for the next couple of games that's starting to look at all order um, nine games left 12 points off that 46 points that you mentioned at the moment. So 12 points from nine games is pretty doable. It's four wins or, you know, three wins and a couple of draws in there as well. Um, but yeah, if, if, if a couple more games go past, then that maybe starts to drift away a little bit with Tottenham still on the horizon. The other thing to bear in mind is that by playing all the bottom teams, you have got teams playing for a lot. The mid-table games, you know, playing Leicester, that's, that's two teams who, you know, are going to be fighting for positions and for points. Um, but a lot of the other games they've got coming up are against teams who are battling to be in this division next season. I'm thinking even down the, down the line of Southampton away. You know, that could be a, a huge game for Southampton by the time we get to that stage. Nice position for Bournemouth to be in, to be making the 30-mile trip across the forest, you know, with their own safety secured, but Southampton's maybe not. Um, so, th yeah, there's, there's lots on all of these games coming up. Um, but this time this weekend is a, is a good chance for Bournemouth to, to just get things moving in the right direction. And just finally, in terms of our team news, you mentioned Callum Wilson could well be back, but also Jefferson Lerma as well. So things are looking a little bit more rosy than when we spoke this time last week. Yeah, absolutely. Jefferson Lerma, it's so frustrating for him to miss the, the games against the big guns. Um, I'm not sure how much difference he would have made in that game last week because, you know, we, we know how that game went against City. But great for him to be back. And, you know, a bit of, I think Eddie sees, you know, that bit of steel in him as well, that just that sort of combative edge. Um, just a bit of fire in that midfield as well and he's, he offers such, such great protection for the centre-halves as well so great for him to be back and hopefully now he'll be problem free and he won't rack up any more bookings if he gets to 15 he's got another problem so he could well yet be suspended yet again this season but hopefully not it's good to see another couple of people have got 10 as well by the way he's not on his own at the top of the list now um, but yeah uh, Lerma back Callum Wilson I, I think certainly will be involved this weekend I think Eddie Howe um, last weekend was playing a few uh, few mind games with the press and things um, but I think Callum will be involved David Brooks I'm sure will start as well the only negative is, is Steve Cook who uh, it looks like he's going to be out for I think at least six weeks um, it could be a little bit longer than that um, with this nasty infection he picked up having having groin treatment so that's a real blow for him I know at the minute he actually can't do much training or rehabilitation because of this infection he's got and the treatment he's on for that so that's the, the sort of injury negative um, is that uh, Steve Cook's going to be missing for a while but Chris Meppham's come in and done really well and looks like he's and him and Jack Simpson now are really competing for one shirt alongside Nathan Ake. Well, it's going to be a very exciting game tomorrow at the John Smith Stadium. If you are going up, have a safe journey. But if not, make sure you keep an eye across all of our social media channels and our website for the latest updates. Thanks for joining us.